any uh, film of this length is quite the feat, and so I'm excited to spend time with the uh, creator himself tonight, Daniel Lawrence Wilson. So I think a great starting point for our conversation is, you know, we just saw many of the faces um, whose names ran on the credits. Uh, talk me through the process of um, recruiting the production crew, um, casting the actors, and just all the creative minds that you pulled together for this film. Uh, yeah, so it took months. <laughs> And a lot of the crew um, that was on the film actually done like commercials in the past um, here in St. Louis. And then the four main lead actors, they're all casted through the internet. And so the casting process for that was probably about four months. Um, and I th we got 8,000 submissions to us. And then I actually physically like went and looked myself like on the website for like, like 15,000. So the the casting was a very big thing for me because the, the story needed to feel like worldly. Um, and then yeah, I mean, just crewed out over a couple months and then started prep. So um, for like six months to get it all lined out. Yeah, so that's a lot of planning and a lot of coordination to bring a crew of this size together. And so one thing that I found fascinating about your creative process is that on any given day of this 14-day production, you had anywhere from 12 to 24 team crew members working on this film. Uh, talk me through a little bit what the process was like to direct and lead a team like this. A lot, because producing, I wouldn't recommend producing and directing. <laughs> There's a lot, there's a lot to balance. Um, you know, there'd be days where we all just have to come together and like problem solve as a group. Um, you know, we would be at one location shooting and then, you know, COVID would happen during this time. And so like the furniture for like a shoot day from like four days from now wasn't gonna like show up. And so we'd like problem solve like that day. And so, yeah, it was, uh, it was, there was a lot. Yeah, so many of the the crew are in the crowd tonight. I, I'm really curious from your perspective, what was your biggest takeaway on working with such a talented group? Because I kind of watched this home from a distance tonight. It was the first time that I actually What'd you think? It was, uh, yeah, it was intense. It, cinematography was beautiful. Um, and it, it was absolutely a cinematic experience. But the-, the He's lying. No, <laughs> what I'm really- what He I'm hasn't seen it yet. I hadn't seen it. He had offered like three, four times, I'm like, no, nope, I want to see it when it's on a big screen. So I'm, I'm glad I made it. But the whole time you worked on this project, he bragged about how the crew was world class. Everyone, every artist, every creative that was working behind this, um, he was just bragging about, I'm working with the best of the best. So talk me through a little bit about what your biggest takeaway was working with uh, these creatives. I mean, you just can't do it alone. It's physically impossible. So like every person matters when it's simply a team. Um, and just getting the group together and, and being able to problem solve quickly and effectively is like everything. Because, you know, it can be a domino effect that affects, it can affect days or hours or minutes. So being able to problem solve as a group is huge. So, yeah, the crew and the cast was like everything. The other thing that very much stood out to me about your creative process is that you have done many projects over the years, but this is your first film of this length. And so one thing that I noticed is 14 days production, you know, usually it takes people twice, in, in twice as much time it would take them to capture, you know, what you've captured. And then you have long days, you have an amazing crew, but for this length and this quality, um, how did you pull off capturing a 40 minute film over a 14 day production with, a, with just a few pickup days? I mean, it was just scheduling, and obviously just getting on St. Louis is pretty easy, so we were able to get multiple things done like in, on like a day. So we could like, like one day we, would, uh, we went to the, one of the mansions and like filmed outside, and then we were able to like pick up and move and like go to like the Pulitzer Art Museum like the same day. So, yeah. You know, I um, was talking to a few folks before, and like, how long is this? And you know, one thing that's interesting to me is, as it relates to runtime, is there's a lot of advice out there. You know, a, sh a short film should be this length, or a feature film should be that length. And so I'm really curious, why did you decide on a 40 minute runtime for this narrative, for the story? Well, it wasn't supposed to be. Uh, we thought it was going to be 20. Uh, and then we got an edit, and it just felt like it, it had so much tense moments that it just needed to breathe. Um, I think maybe my DP there was probably the only one that was like, no, bro, this is probably going to be like 30, 40 minutes. We've been shooting for two weeks. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. 
but the, the page count is at 18, so the lesson learned with that is that pages don't matter really. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to do a 40 minute film um, just because I wanted to. Um, I got kind of suggested that I should make it shorter, but the arc is so long that if you take anything out, it just kind of doesn't make sense. Um, and yeah, I will say that we've been doing the film festival circuit, um, and we've gotten like 10 no's. But this morning, uh, I got an email at 11 a.m. and we did just get into our first festival this morning. <laughs> And so uh, it's it's a weird runtime. They want five, 10, 15 minutes, or they want a feature. They don't want this weird forty-minute thing. And so we've gotten a lot of no's, but we just stuck true to what we felt was best for the edit. Um, and then yeah, got the news that we got into our first one today. So it's uh, the Santa Monica International Film Festival. Well, congrats to both Daniel and crew for uh, getting in your first film festival. It's a big deal. Um, I want to spend a few moments on talking about your cast. And you, you mentioned, did you really look at 15,000 people in casting? I mean, that is... Awful. Yeah, four months, 15,000. Awful. Yeah. Which, I think one thing that, you know, I'm sure maybe a few of you know, but many of you do not know, the lead tonight, Mia Christina, she um, is actually a professional photographer. But this is her first time in front of the screen. So I'm, I'm curious for you, Daniel, um, directing someone in their actor debut, their actoral debut. What was the process like working with Mia? It was interesting and it was really fun because we were both figuring out together. Um, but literally, when I saw her face, I was like, oh, this is probably her. Granted, it took a couple of months and thousands of pages and looking at it and whatnot, but it was so crazy whenever I went to her profile, she was actually a real film photographer. Um, and she was like, I'm high risk because I've never acted before. And I'm like, yeah, but you're this chick though. So like, this should be easy for you. And then the first day that I met her uh, was when I picked her up in the airport. And I took her to the Cheshire. I checked her in and they were like, Mia, Christina, 18 days. And she's like, yep, and I'm about to find out if this was a giant fucking mistake or not. Because <laughs> I this, this dude literally just picked me up from the airport, and yeah, this could get really weird, so we'll see. And the Cheshire is like super creepy and shit, she's just like, where am I? <laughs> did, that, did that help anyway setting uh, Tom for the film? She was like, this hotel is definitely haunted. Yeah. And so she was super creeped out, and so it worked uh, in her favor. I just, yeah, I assume that was an intentional, a very intentional move. It wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to spend a, a moment talking about um, Avor, who's your lead actor. And so looking through 15,000 faces and to pick this lead, you actually found him here in St. Louis. So I'm, I'm kind of curious, how did you meet him? And what was the process like of casting him in the film? And how did you know he was right for this role? Yeah, so he, he's from Bulgaria and he moved here uh, two years ago. Um, and he's actually a pretty successful and famous actor in, in that country. Um, and he came over here, moved here, uh, and then lockdown happened and all that stuff. Um, but his submission came in, and I was like, oh, this is interesting. Like, he speaks these languages, da da da. Um, he's got his portfolio, it's just like super long. Um, and then it said St. Louis, Missouri. And I was like, this has got to be like a spam bot or something, that this is not real. Um, and then we met up, and I was just like, this guy is totally the dude, and he's the only person that read for that role. And so I think I had like, like a thousand people throughout the country that wanted to audition, and I just never let anyone else. And so he was the only one that, that uh, auditioned for that role. And he was just clearly the guy to me. Super cool. So one thing that I think is on probably many of our minds tonight is this was all shot here in St. Louis. So I, what I'm really curious about is why, why St. Louis? Um, you have a vast network, you know people in a lot of places. You could have shot this in any city, but you chose St. Louis. Why? I mean, honestly, like it was just an exercise that I was doing, and then I, I was like, I want to like, write something to shoot here. 
And so it was very, all the locations and everything was like very calculated with the concept. And so when I would write a scene, it was with this spot in mind. And so I literally just wrote the script for the city. Yeah. One thing that you provided me ahead of time, and I thought this was just fascinating to see how many locations you work with. And I know maybe some of you were kind enough to let Daniel use a location for this film, but just a list of film locations in St. Louis. Uh, Zach Smithy Studio. Uh, um, basically, at St. St. Charles Woods, you had two different private estates, uh, the tunnel at the airport, Utopia, a local cemetery, Mountain, uh, the, t the tower at um, Opa, Magnolia, Pulitzer, um, Laumeyer, and then multiple locations here at Webster University, and then the mural um, located in Midtown. So how much did these locations help the vision and your story come to life? I mean, it's everything. Like, if this guy doesn't live in the right house, it doesn't work. Like, no one knows who he is, so can't have neighbors, okay? So, like, that, just like, okay, now it's gotta be in the woods, and now we gotta find this creepy house that kind of shows this narrative. Um, but, I mean, the locations were just, like, everything for that, yeah. And that was one thing, you, you asked what I thought about the film, and the cinematography was beautiful, the locations, I mean, there was so much thought. I know you put a ton of time into scouting, but I, I was fascinated by, I know you work with two private estates, and they're, they're beautiful locations, right? Um, but Yeah, so what he's saying is the mansion, we shot, there's the exterior, and then we, we cheated the interior, so there's two mansions. They're, it's not one house. Yeah, so talk about, how, how did you get those two mesh together? I mean, it's kind of the, the magic of, your cinematography, but was, was that all done in editing? Did you have that plan for the beginning? I think the biggest thing was just finding two houses that were built around the same time period. And so the, the, both those houses were built in like early 1900s. So once you kind of can match the aesthetics, then obviously the, the camera work and lighting and, and the edit is just going to help that. But it's just like casting for buildings, basically. It's like, oh, these match. They're like in the same era. So by doing that, we're going to, they're going to look similar. Yeah. So my next question actually is for the audience. So just by show of hands, for those of you who live here in St. Louis, I'm curious, did anyone see the Midtown mural before you knew of or saw this film tonight? Anyone see it? Okay. Okay, about five or six of you. So one thing that fascinated There's me- more. What'd you say? There'll be more after tonight. Yeah, yeah. One thing that fascinated me watching from a distance, and my wife and I used to live in St. Louis, and I even, drove by at one time is there was a local Fox um, station they picked it up did a story on it there was a reddit thread what is this mural for like it just showed up it's in Midtown does anyone have any idea what this mural is about yeah. so do you want to talk a little bit about the process of creating that new mural and um, yeah just what brought that to life yeah so obviously it's the ending and it's the first image of this guy that's like known to the general public and so it's very important because it's like the end of the film and so, literally, Zach was the first person I hit up, and I'm like, yo, bro, no pressure, but uh, I've been working on this thing for like, I don't know, like six, eight months, and uh, if you don't help me with this mural, I can't make this film. <laughs> and I sent him like this big, like, pitch deck with like the script and images and stuff, because uh, like the images that she takes of him is like iconic, so it's like, it's going into the real world with like, murals and, you know, merchandise and all that stuff. But yeah, the process was oddly really easy. Uh, Zach was friends with the owner. Like I went to the building and I was like, this is the perfect building. And I emailed the owner and he was like, oh, I'm friends with Zach. Yeah, you guys can kind of do whatever you want. And literally didn't ask like what it was, what we're doing, when, nothing. He was just like, yeah, I trust you guys, you can do whatever. Um, and then he prepped it for a day for a couple hours. Um, and then uh, Audley went up very, very fast. Like we actually had to stop him. Yeah, it was, he went so fast and we like, had to like slow him down because we had to like change windows and like move the camera around and stuff. Um, but yeah, we have a video of that uh, here in a little bit when we're wrapped up on this. We'll see the whole process and that sort of thing. Yeah. So as we wrap up, yeah, the BTS, there's some really beautiful behind the scenes of uh, what made this possible. So there's actually a time lapse for the beginning. So definitely stick around to see kind of what that, the making of that mural looked like, in addition to a lot of other behind the scenes. 
But in closing, I, you know, I've asked you questions, and I just wonder, is there anything else you want to talk about in the process of bringing the story to life? And uh, yeah, through your directorial debut, um, anything else you want to share with the audience tonight? I mean, just, uh, this is like so special to me. Like I got old friends, new friends. Like this is just like so amazing. Um, and this night will like, it's so unique it's in, in, in rare. Like I feel like it's just, it's just this one night. But I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who uh, contributed and helped. Uh, it really means a lot. And obviously you saw the credits. It took like 60 people to do this thing. So it was just a very big, ambitious, story and uh, a lot of people here help make that happen so i just want to say thank you for coming out yeah and yeah so in closing you know thanks to all of you for uh, being here um, we're going to start the bts so um, i know a lot of us family friends and crew are going to hang out but if you uh, are just um, here tonight to take it in feel free to stay around for the behind the scenes thanks for being here i hope you enjoyed this private screening of a brush of violence thank you awesome thanks guys